Jamil Surfer Gunstock Reviews. Hello, folks. This is Jamil Surfer Gunstock Reviews. We're here in Phoenix, Arizona, at the headquarters of Enlo Custom Guns with Marty. How are you doing, buddy? Good. And before we start on video today, we want to ask you to like this video, share this video, and subscribe to the channel so we might continue to bring you content like this. Marty, uh, you have a high power in your hands. I have your high power. You have my high power. Okay, guys. I'm going to tell you the whole story. I'm going to try to make this as brief as I can. Back in the 90s, I picked up a Belgian brining high power that was in so-so shape. I had it. I had the snake belly cut on, done on top. As a, it's nothing scientific about that. It's just pretty, okay, for my taste. Right, I right. know not everybody's into it. And I gave it to a local gunsmith to do some work to it. Um, at that time... It was early 2000. I was I left town and I lost contact with a gunsmith. And time passed. He moved. I moved twice, three times. And in 2018, we met a gun site and he goes, I got your gun. <laughs> but over 18 years, he had lost a bunch of parts. And he, I'm not going to blame him because he moved several times too. So I acquired some parts. Um, through Brownells and different places. I sent the slide up to Novax, then the coof hit, and then I was Marty was going to work on it. And Well, you're, you're, you're missing your dates a little bit. Uh, yeah. So when, when you first brought this to us, uh, was it when was I worked at Robar. Robar. Yeah. yeah, and then I sent the slide to... You, you sent the slide to, uh, you sent the slide to Novax, and uh, in that time, Robar closed, and so... Uh, and the and the yeah. coof hit. And yeah, then, the, the coof hit, and then, uh, then you... Uh, you brought it to me and said, "Hey, can you uh, can you work on this?" And I mean, in, in that time, I had started my own business and uh, started doing gunsmithing. I started doing gunsmithing again, and uh, yeah, that's how that's how we ended up with this. And then, uh, and and, yeah. and then um, there was um, the original gunsmith had done some welding on the beaver tail, mm -hmm. but he he had put in an old beat up SDI. Beaver tail. Mm -hmm. He just cut a 1911 beaver tail and welded it to it. And Marty said the welding was really, really good welding. Yeah, the wel the welds were fine. It's just the the, 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 the beaver, beaver tail was was not something I could make look pretty. Okay, no, tell me the truth. You told me it was hideous. It was hideous. Okay, I I, I, I tried. I, I tried. I looked at it. I tried, and it's just a, as far as like uh, the type of work I can do. Uh, there was there was. I, I couldn't make that that ugly duckling a swan. It really just couldn't be. Okay, right? yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and I understand because it was a 1911 beaver tail attached to a you know welded onto a. Well, high power. it was also a uniquely shaped 1911 beaver tail. It wasn't. Yeah. It was. It wasn't. Uh, it, w it wasn't something that uh, followed any lines of the gun. Yeah. So yeah. that that was why that was why I just cut it off and and we we welded on something new. Yeah, and that's testament to for the little I know about welding your weld and the previous weld mm -hmm. it has two welds on it and well i mean it, it whatever's whatever would have been left there it was basically cut off cut so, off yeah. yeah but then you right. welded yours and you blew it and mm -hmm. i can't see any markings or discoloration mm -hmm. or anything like that i've seen people weld on on guns and then they yeah they you, look, you could run into issues with it yeah, yeah they look like crap mm-hmm but now, let's talk about what you did to it, and okay. what Novak did to it, and how it's finally done. Mm -hmm. Novak put rear sight, front sight uh, brass bead. Mm -hmm. They did their, their matting. It's not mm -hmm. stippling. They call it matting. Yeah, okay. And a French border on it. Yeah, yeah. And they blued it. Marty, you use cylinder slide, trigger, sear. And hammer, yeah. And hammer. And single-sided uh, safety on it. Yes. And then you stippled the back strap mm -hmm. and the front strap around the serial number because mm -hmm. Browning's serial number is in the front strap. Yes. Well, it depends. Some 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 have them on the front strap, some don't. Some, and some then don't, uh, yeah. some uh, you don't really have the option of doing anything to because some of those Brownings are, are so light with the serial number that simply... Uh, Simply sandblasting it, it, it it almost goes away. Yeah. So uh, you have to you have to be extremely careful with them. Um, but yeah, there there is the the notion that uh, not every high power has them on the uh, on, on the front strap, but uh, 
Uh, plenty of them do. How about that? Okay. So, yeah. yeah. And this one was, uh, was 1970s, if mm -hmm. I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. um, but everything else, you just re the frame mm -hmm. after you did all that work. But, guys, oh, oh, and you told me the original hammer I gave you didn't fit the beaver tail. So, oh, yeah. Okay. He, he yeah. had the longer hammer. Mm, yeah. So, I got another cylinder slide hammer than the one we had in the kit. Mm -hmm. Now, after... 23 years, mm -hmm. the gun is finally finished. This is like a big, long soap opera. Well, I probably first saw this gun three years ago, four years ago. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's it's been a while. I mean, uh, you know, and, and in the time that we had it at Robar, I suggested uh, sending it to Novax, uh, mainly because uh, I, I really was concerned about uh, the, uh, the snake belly. The snake belly, right? yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, they're, they're professionals there, and it's not to say I couldn't do it, but uh, I, I knew they had a handle on it because they would have known which sights to put on there because uh, there's variances in high power sights as well. There's the, what they have, the Mark II, the Mark III's. I mean, you could even run a, a set of 1911 sights on there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I just, I, I knew they would have had a, a clue better, and obviously they, they, they knew you and uh, so took care of you. But uh, I mean, I don't, I, I, I don't think in the time, it probably sat with me for a few months as far as the frame goes, mm -hmm. but, uh, I think you took the slide, and I mean, it was a couple of years before it came back, wasn't it? Or yeah, yeah. because I sent it out, and then the coup hit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh yeah, okay. And so by the time I send it, mm. and Robart closed down, mm -hmm. and then the coup hit, and mm -hmm. there was nobody there. They, you know, yeah, yeah. And I keep forgetting about it. Well, yeah, yeah. It's one of those things, and then the. The guy who worked there called me on the phone. Hey, dude, I still have this slide of yours. Do you want it? Yeah. He goes, oh, crap. Yeah, mm -hmm. I want it. And then he sent it to me. Then I, I gave it to you. And so it's it's been a long time mm -hmm. going. But you know what? All good things to those who wait. Yeah. yeah. And I, I yeah. just, before we started uh, doing this video, I did dry fire it quite a bit. And it just... I told Marty how much I like the trigger pull, and he told me how much, the weight is six pounds. Yeah, the weight's around six pounds. Now, uh, that's that's a unique thing about high powers is that there's a few pounds of take up, right? Uh, there's a few pounds where the, basically the trigger moves back and forth. Now, not to say you couldn't get absolutely lighter, but there's there's things around the high power that make them unique. And one of the one of the things about that is is that okay. Uh, some of the factory springs. I mean, if you go if you go with a, a with the factory springs, they were not meant for guns that uh, at least some of the newer, let's say guns in the '90s. I mean, I think they had somewhere around like a 29 pound hammer spring. You can't get a light trigger pull with a 29 ha pound hammer spring, but they were done in such a way because they were meant to be drop safe from uh, they were meant to be drop safe without uh, firing from block safeties like Series 80 stuff, right? Uh, then you got. Uh, you know the linkage changes things so it it what it has is it has a very crisp break and could it be lighter yeah but it's it's still quite shootable i mean you you know when i told you it was six pounds you were surprised but it's it's a very shootable trigger and i mean yeah the thing is is that if you're going for three pounds uh it may not always be possible out of high powers so yeah. i mean and nobody needs a high high power three pound trigger you know, I'd say that I haven't gotten there, but there, there's also some unique factors around high powers in that uh, some of their uh, components, where their, uh, where the holes go on the frame, uh, let's say the sear pin where the sear is located and where the hammer, those wander, and so mm. those are unique gun to gun, <laughs> and that's 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 another fun thing about brining high powers is that okay. Uh, each each one is its own different animal. So I mean, obviously this one turned out really good. And uh, like I say, it's a very, very easily, easily shootable gun. Um, but yeah, it, it's one of those things that uh, you don't need to get so wrapped up in, in uh, what the weight is. It's and still- the trigger weight, yeah. yeah. And one good thing about it is like, my hands are not as big as Dave's back there. His mitts, he picked this gun up, looked like a Derringer in his hands, okay? <laughs> but I have this grip really high so now with the beaver tail, it protects my mm -hmm. um, the web of my hand from mm -hmm. getting bit by the hammer. And I can say safely, this pistol is going to be fantastic, but we're going to take it out to the range and shoot it for the first time in 23 years. There we go. So we're going to go out later on in the week. We're going to go and hang out with Freddie and Ben Avery. So we'll take it out and shoot it. 
So guys, stay tuned for this. This is gonna be one interesting uh, range video. And I know you guys come with us and we'll go ahead and shoot it. Different kinds of ammo and we'll test it. Marty, thank you. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. After 23 years, he's back home. <laughs> and guys, thanks for watching. And like always, remain healthy, stay safe, and definitely have fun at the range.